As we mentioned on the last show, though, we released the 2017 film about Jenny Simpson on our YouTube page for all to enjoy. Well, today we have the star of that film, Jenny Simpson herself. Jenny, thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing? I'm great. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's fun to virtually connect as we are doing these days. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And as we mentioned, we put the film up, so I had to, I rewatched it. Um, 2017 is when it was shot, although it does a really good job of hitting on all basically the key points of your career, the highs and lows. Um, what were your memories just of, of shooting that film and having the opportunity to reflect on, at that point was a completely full career, but now it's four years ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, I probably should have rewatched it before this podcast because <laughs> my memory <laughs> might not be perfect four years later, but, uh, but maybe that's better because I like can express what I actually remember four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing that I remember the most was the terrible snowstorm that blew in and the weather during the filming of that. And um, I even, when you and I were emailing about this podcast, I even said then, like, it just felt so appropriate that for the video that you guys would come out and shoot for me, that the weather would be kind of brutal. And we would get kind of the combination of, like, something that's really difficult and uncomfortable and challenging. But at the same time, it's beautiful and it's scenic and there's... There's something really beautiful in struggling through those tough days. And it just felt like that was the more appropriate thing if you wanted to see behind the scenes, uh, because what you see in races and on the track is often when we're at our best, we're uh, in these sleek uniforms in the best shape of our lives. Uh, so it felt more appropriate to show a little bit of the hardship. Yeah, you have obviously the awesome drone shots there of you running in the snow and they did some close-ups on your feet. You can see that you put the yak tracks or whatever they're called, the things to, to keep you from slipping and sliding. And then your coach, Mark Wetmore, describes your workout as being relatively you know boring, like you're in the indoor facility. So it definitely was not this glamorized view of, of, of training. Is it still the same for you? Are days looking pretty close to that? minus all the COVID restrictions. Yeah. yeah, and actually we had kind of a harsh winter. And so uh, even the like little bit of gloominess that I think the video portrays kind of well, you know, you're, we have a beautiful facility uh, and, and it's this big cathedral ceiling looking inside the IPF and uh, the indoor practice track. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's awesome, but just the weather can kind of bring a gloom over everything you're doing when it's just cold and, and, uh, and cloudy outside. And so we had a lot of that this winter. So it does feel like, um, like this winter is, is similar to what we shot there. But, um, I, I think what you said is, is really true. And I'm glad that Mark said it in the video that I had kind of a boring workout. There's so much of what we do that is more similar to what everyone else is doing. You know, there's, when it comes to running and training, there's so much more overlap between what a high schooler is doing and an elite athlete is doing because we're all running, we're all doing, you know, mileage and uh, threshold runs and intervals. And so there's, there's a surprising amount of overlap. And I think uh, it's tempting to think that the elite athletes have this whole different world in which they're training under a completely different context with different routines. Um, but it's just kind of the normal every day, put in your miles and put in the workouts. And there's some that are really exciting and sexy when you get into the summer and you're doing, you know, really hard 400s and 200s getting ready for 15. Um, but I mean, the majority of that base work is just slogging through tons and tons and tons of miles, anywhere from eight minute pace to 530 pace, depending on the day in the workout. Towards the end of the piece, you mentioned that one of the things I get asked all the time is how much longer am I going to do this, which is interesting because, again, it was 2017 and here we are in 2021. And then Mark also mentioned we're looking more forward than back. And at that point, you had three medals. But since then, you've won another medal. You've run 358 again. Is that mindset the same still that there is this um, there's things that you still want to accomplish that that you haven't? got gotten off the your uh, your checklist yet yeah you know what you guys came out to do is show a little bit of behind the scenes and so i'll give you an even more behind the scenes of of <laughs> that of 
I love that, the context of that moment. So during January, February of that year, um, there was some talk about going back um, and trying to get um, a promotion into the medals um, of my steeplechase in 2009. And um, mm-hmm. there's some reason to believe that I should have, I, I'm, I'm right now currently sitting in fourth, I think. Um, and so that 2009 medal was a little bit like, there's reason to believe that I should have been moved up and other people should have been moved up. And so there was some discussion during that time of, of what was happening there. And um, I remember with maybe some amount of hubris saying the best chances for me to get another medal are this summer at the world championships, then trying to look back and, and get get something that already mm. has happened. You know, that bureaucratic process is just really difficult. And and it's, it's like, it's almost to that, you know, the, what actually ran through the finish line of any world championships isn't what holds true years later. Um, so it's, it's a fraught experience when, when medals are mounted. Um, just remember like trying to tell myself not to hold out hope that I would get that steeplechase medal and to still really focus on the future and really focus on the summer. Um, and at the same time, I was having a lot of, um, just, uh, there were things in my personal life that were difficult, just things that my family were going through. Uh, and so it was a, it was like a really fraught, challenging time. Uh, and it was really important to me really just to focus on August, <laughs> you know, focus on June, mm-hmm. July, making the world championships, uh, and focusing on like, what are we actually working for in this moment? It's not all these difficult things that have happened in the past. It's really pointing towards the future. So when Mark says we were forward thinking, it was that way in so many ways that we didn't even know maybe how to unpack at that time. And of course, looking back now. Um, and so I go and, you know, we may or may not talk about this, but I go through the summer, make the team go to the world championships and really, really against all the odds, um, pulled off another medal performance in that summer. And that was just so like, validating and fulfilling in a way that other medals hadn't been in the past, um, just because of the context of the year and and training for that. So I have kind of taken that moment in my career and tried to allow that to be a lesson for me forever in saying, no matter where you are, no matter what you're trying to claw back from the past, uh, as long as you stay forward thinking, like that's your best chance at success and progress is to think about what's ahead.